So it's uh, there's evidence that from the very beginning these mm. people were already like an organized society. Organized, Thank you. yes, very Thank organized you. and also very smart. They had different. Este video llega a ustedes gracias a nuestros patrones, especialmente Belki, Emilio, Junior, Edgar, Fred, Gabriel y Niño. Hola Solunatics, bienvenidos a Sol en Luna TV. Yo soy Sol y yo soy Luna. And today we have a very interesting video that you guys requested. It is the history of the Philippines wow. in 12 minutes. minutes. As usual, you guys know that we are very interested in, in learning. History. In learning all the history of the Philippines. We are history junkies. We are invested in this. We've been <laughs> reacting to historical Invested, books. like it's a chica. <laughs> <laughs> marites, marites, marites. Marites, marites. I, así es. So we have reacted to Filipino historical uh, movies. And we had taken an interest in learning the history about the Philippines. So you guys recommended this video so uh, for us to learn about the history in only 12, 12 minutes. minutes. Thank you very much for recommending this. And also, thank you very much to our certified and verified Solunatics, especially Cherry Floor, Janice, and, and Sayu. Thank you very much, guys, for helping our channel. If you also want to become a member like them, you can click on the join button next to the subscribe button. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, this is the moment, subscribe, like this video share it with your in your social media with your friends and family and don't forget to follow us we are everywhere as sol luna tv now let's watch the history of the philippines Excited. the history of oh. what is today the philippines started with the arrival of its first humans Ooh. it is believed they used rafts or boats around 60,000 years ago with Whoa. groups of diverse people settling in the archipelago Some of these groups started to develop and expand into bigger settlements, and in the next thousands of years, they evolved into what some scholars believe to be considered early states. I Australia. wish they would say, ah, okay, they are already saying, but that's what I wanted to know, like, which what kind of people? groups what kind were of people? those? Yeah. <laughs> okay, very diverse people, like, uh -huh. who, who, from where? And afterwards, speakers of the Malayo-Polynesian languages began to arrive in successive waves beginning about 4,000 BC. Wow. According to the existing evidence, a jade culture existed on these lands, starting with the Neolithic era. By 1,000 BC, it is believed that the inhabitants of the archipelago had Why developed into watching? four distinct this? kinds jade? of people, tribal groups, warrior societies, the petty plutocracy, and the harbor civilizations. Oh, I wonder which one is the Tagalog nation. Yeah, the Tagalog nation is um, on top. Yes, in the I know, area. I know. <laughs> I'm talking about these four tribes. Ah, <laughs> who was warrior, who was a stuff, a stuff, a stuff. Yeah, which one is the Tagalog? Maybe the, the, the thingy? <laughs> Maybe. I think the warriors Plutro are Plutocracy? For some reason, I believe because of La Pulapu was a, a un guerrero. Ah, and makes sense. I don't know. Well, yeah. we're getting ahead of ourselves <laughs> and we have to check ahead. Yeah. They will inform us, I guess. Also important to note is the fact that the metallurgy reached the archipelago due to trade with India. Oh, Around yeah. 300 to 700 AD, the seafaring people of the islands began to trade with the Indianized kingdoms in the Malay archipelago and the nearby East Asian principalities, adopting influences from both Buddhism and Hinduism. Oh. Some cultures of present-day Vietnam showed evidence of an extensive trade network. Artifacts and goods were traded, such as glass, agate, or gold. There were also other items present in the region which were most likely imported, including ear ornaments that have been found in archaeological sites in the Philippines, Thailand, and Taiwan. The Indian culture influenced the Southeast Asian region starting with the first century. 
During the period of the South Indian Pallava dynasty and the North Indian Gupta Empire, Indian culture spread to Southeast Asia, and it reached the Philippines, which led to the establishment of new kingdoms largely influenced by the Indian culture wow. and traditions. I didn't know I that. Didn't know that. But yeah, this is all pre-colonization Yes, as well. yeah. Oh my god, this is interesting. Date inscribed in the oldest Philippine document found so far, the Laguna, Laguna. Copperplate inscription Copper is 900 AD. From the details of the document, written in Kawi script, the bearer of a debt, Namwaran, along with his children, is cleared of a debt by the ruler of Tondo. This is the earliest document that shows the use of mathematics in pre-colonial wow. Philippine societies. A standard system of weights and measures is also demonstrated by the use of precise measurement for gold and other items, as well as in astronomy. From the various Sanskrit terms so and titles. Uh, there's evidence that from the very beginning, these people were already like an organized society. Organized, Thank you. yes, very Thank organized you. and also very smart. They had different areas that they were skilled in. They have a writing system. They have a metric system. They they were really a community. They were. ...seen in the document, the culture and society of the Manila Bay were that of Hindu Old Malay amalgamation, similar oh, and they were to the religions. cultures of Java, Peninsular Malaysia, and Sumatra at the time. In the years leading up to 1000, there were already several maritime societies existing in the islands, but there was no unifying political state mm -hmm. encompassing the entire Philippine archipelago. Instead, the region was divided into numerous semi-autonomous city-states under the rule of the plutocracy, while a number of states existed alongside the highland societies. These smaller structures alternated between being part of or being influenced by larger Asian empires like Maya Pahit. Around 1225, the nation of Mai, a Buddhist pre-Hispanic Philippine island state centered in Mondoro, flourished, attracting traders and shipping from the kingdom of Ryukyu to the empire of Japan. Chao Jakua, a customs inspector in Fukian province, China, wrote the description of the barbarous peoples, describing trade with this pre-colonial state. Its people were noted for their honesty in trade. Much of what is now Indonesia was ruled by the Hindu Maya Pahit Empire. During the 1300s, this empire ruled over Luzon Island and the Sulu Archipelago. As oh, more wow. and more influence was on these islands, skirmishes and battles also existed. Some local tribes were waging incessant guerrilla warfare against them. Eventually, the kingdoms of Luzon regained independence from Maya Pahit after the Battle of Manila, 1365. Sulu mm, also re-established independence and in vengeance assaulted the Mayapahit province of Brunei before a fleet from the capital drove them out. The start of the Islamic era in Indonesia set the collapse of the Mayapahits as its provinces eventually seceded and became independent sultanates. In 1380, Makdum Karim, an Arab trader born in Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca and brought Islam to the Philippines. Oh, Additionally, wow. Sharif ul Hashim, an Arab Muslim explorer, established the Sultanate of Sulu by converting its previous ruler, the Hindu king Raja Baguinda, to Islam and then marrying his daughter. The oh, Sultanate wow. One Ooh. person did this significant change to the culture, religion, yeah. and everything. Mary to the this, daughter of the not only Sulu, Sulu but like all this part of where Indonesia is right now, right? Yeah, that's half in uh, that isla is half Indonesia, half Malaysia. Mm. I have the present day. <laughs> the of Maguindanao rose to prominence at the end of the 15th century. Meanwhile, Maguindanao. the religion was introduced to the area by Muslim missionaries and traders from the Middle East, Indian, and Malay regions who propagated Islam to Sulu and Maguindanao. As before, when Buddhist... Maguindanao. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot so influenced the archipelago, <laughs> the same case happened with the Muslim culture. 
Upon the secession of Brunei from the Maya Pahit Empire, they imported the Arab Emir from Mecca, Sheriff Ali, and became an independent sultanate. The new religion started to grow roots in the Philippines through conquest and conversion of local leaders in the next decades. Wow. Moreover, Islam was further strengthened by the arrival to the Philippines of traders and proselytizers from Malaysia and Indonesia. In 1521, oh no, they're coming. <laughs> the Spanish reached the archipelago through the expedition around the world, led by Portuguese-born Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magellan. So this is how they reached? Them? Claiming the islands he saw for the Spanish Empire. He established friendly relations with some of the local leaders and converted some of them to Roman Catholicism. Because the Philippines are a large archipelago... Notice how they always convert the leaders first because they know that the leaders can influence other their people followers, and, yes. and, yeah, and get their numbers. The Spaniards started to explore many islands. However, the explorer Ferdinand Magellan was killed during the Battle of Mactan against, against the local Lapu, ruler Lapu-Lapu. Lapu. Yes. Over the next several decades, other Spanish expeditions were dispatched to the islands. In 1543, an expedition was led to the islands naming them Philippines, in honor of Philip of Austria, who became Philip II of Spain on January 16, 1556. The name was then extended to the entire archipelago later on in the Spanish era. European colonization began in earnest when Spanish explorer Miguel Lopez de Legazpi arrived from Mexico in 1565 and mm -hmm. forms the first European settlements in Cebu. Through diplomatic and military annexation of some lands incorporating local states including the Kingdom of Tondo, the Spaniards established Manila as the capital of the Spanish East Indies. In 1578, the Castilian War erupted between the Christian Spaniards and Muslim Bruneians over control of the Philippine archipelago. The Christian troops were so diverse due to generally being made up of people under the Spanish rule, including Native Americans, namely Aztecs, Mayans, and Incans, who were gathered and sent from Mexico from and Mexico, South America. Yeah, to well, I was going to say like, oh, but these are the same Native American from Mexico. Yeah. Except the Incans. Incans are from, from Peru. South America. South America, uh -huh. yeah. Aztecs and Mayans are, are from, from Mexico. Mexico yeah. Yeah officers that had worked together with native Filipinos in military campaigns across Southeast Asia. The Muslim side was also very diverse though. They were supported by the Ottoman Empire with their troops consisting of Malay warriors and expeditionary forces sent by the Ottomans which included mainly Turks, Egyptians, Swahilis, Somalis, Indians wow. and others. The conflict ended with a status quo antebellum. Just 20 years after the conquest of Luzon, remarkable progress existed in the work of colonization of the islands and the spread of Christianity. A cathedral was built in the city of Manila with an Episcopal palace. Other monastery and churches were built across islands, and more and more people started to convert to Christianity. Furthermore, Spanish and Mexican families settled in the new lands, creating stronger communities. Much of the archipelago came under Spanish rule, creating the first unified political structure known as the Philippines. Spanish colonial rule saw the introduction of Christianity, the code of law, and the oldest modern university in Asia. The Philippines was ruled by the Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain, and after, the colony was directly governed by Spain. Many of oh, the wow. So, yeah, a lot of Filipinos have Mexican ancestry too. Yes, because of that. <laughs> yeah, it's not only Spanish ancestry. So, yeah, I guess that <laughs> is true. You guys are the Latinos. <laughs> you are bound by history with Mexico. Yes, definitely. Local people revolted in the next centuries due mm, to some abuses made by the Spanish authorities. Yes. Their rule ended after the American-Spanish War at the end of the 19th no. century. <laughs> 1898, the it Philippines happened. became a territory of the United States. The United States then established the insular governments to rule the Philippines. In 1907, the elected assembly was set up with popular elections.
the U.S. promised independence in the Jones Act to the country, and the Philippine Commonwealth was established in 1935 as a 10-year interim step period Ten to years. full independence. But before gaining total freedom, in 1942, during World oh, War no. II, the Philippines was occupied by Japanese forces. By 1945, the U.S. liberated the Philippines and the Treaty of Manila in 1946 established an independent Philippine Republic. The yes. period of their independence was marked by internal skirmishes and a smaller period of dictatorship, but also huge progress and development, with Manuel Roxas becoming the first president mm. of the Independent Republic of the Philippines. What? What happened? S accuse me. Aguinaldo was. Isn't uh, uh, what happened? Uh, I'm confused now because it's, isn't it supposed to be Emilio Aguinaldo, the first president of the Republic of the United States ceded its sovereignty over the Philippines on July 4th, 1946, as scheduled. However, the Philippine economy remained highly dependent on United States markets. Oh. Roxas died suddenly of a heart attack in April uh. 1948, and the Vice President Elpidio Quirino ruled Quirino. the country. Quirino! Oh my god. I can now with it. It's true. Uh, the thing is that Aguinaldo was before the independence. It's true. We were forgetting that fact. This is after the independence. Yeah, Aguinaldo was when they were uh, still fighting with the Americans. Makes sense now, but then oh. why is he considered the first president then? Because he was the first one that was ever called president. Well. 1953. Some communist partisans existed in the islands, but were defeated in the 50s. Additionally, an important event happened in the middle of the yes, 1960s. Ferdinand Marcos took power in 1965 Ooh, this is the and Marco ruled Rule. until 1986. Oh, the this wow. era included the final years of the Third Republic from 1965 to 1972 and the Philippines under martial law 1972 to 1981. His reign was marked by dictatorship and instability. Wow. In 1986, Ferdinand Marcos was removed from power and replaced by Maria Corazon Aquino. Aquino. Up to the present day, five other presidents. Is ruled. she related to to Aquino over there? What is the name? El P ah, es Quirino, no Aquino. <laughs> Lo que tú no has notado es que Diosdado Macapagal must be, like Gloria, Gloria Ma Macapagal must be, must be related, related to, to Diosdado Macapagal. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently in the Philippines, politics stays in, like the, in the family. family. <laughs> yes. Uh, ah, so this video, it was until Rodrigo Duterte. Rodrigo Duterte, yes. Rodrigo, sí. So, uh, they haven't included uh, the new, the new president, Marcos. Yeah, because it's, it's called Marco too. Yeah, it's Ferdinand Marcos the Junior. Uh, yeah, Junior, something like that. All right. The Philippines. Let me to see the, the names day, of the other. Five other presidents. Fidel Ooh. Ramos, Joseph Estrada, Gloria Mapac Macapagal, Benigno, Benigno Simeon Aquino, Aquino and, and Rodrigo Duterte. Duterte. We will soon react to all the presidents from the Philippines. Ah, talaga? Yeah, because Bucket. they requested this. Ah, oh yeah, they requested like a video of the 12 16 presidents, I think. Yeah, something like 60, that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. 16 presidents of the Philippines. Something Can't like wait. That. But I decided to react to this first because I wanted to know more about the history first and then we could recognize which presidents are those because <laughs> like, you know, we, oh. I didn't want to be like in a blank slate. So awesome that they had a female president in the year we were born. In 1986, Very I mean, progressive. it's 2022 and the Dominican Republic hasn't had one female president. I feel and the future is female, they say. I feel so aggravated. I feel like the Philippines could be an example for other nations. That it doesn't matter your gender, you can be the ruler of a nation, you know? And they that, have had more than one. Yes, because he has Maria Corazon Aquino was the first and female Gloria president. Also. And they already had Gloria Ma 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 Capagal. Capagal. I you always know, have up problems to the present with that. Day, 
five other presidents ruled the Philippines. Oh, that's it. Aww. That's All nice. right, this Sorry. was very enlight enlightening. I learned a lot, but don't ask me about dates. <laughs> <laughs> well, they started really, really early. They started talking about Big C and even a lot of history happened during the 1300s. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But you know what is a, a little bit like a paradox? You know that Native American people, I'm talking about the Mayans, the Incas, etc. They actually came from Asia, and those were the people who crossed the El Estrecho de Berin. How do you say Estrecho de Berin? I have no idea. They crossed the Berin and populated the America continent populated. that was empty. Yes. So. Basically, in the end, like they went they back, went back to, to Asia to, Asia, <laughs> uh, to fight there in the Philippines, and that's for me that's a remarkable history fact that, that we didn't nobody know cares about. about. We had no idea about <laughs> this. That probably nobody cares about. Like, oh, mira, que, que curioso! What a curious thing that yeah. happened. I heard that most of the Mexican people who went to the Philippines, they settled in Sambuanga region. Oh yeah. And that's why like the Sambuangueños learned to mix the Spanish the accent Spanish. with the Mexican accent. Yeah, and with a lot of things like because <laughs> they hear it yeah, every day. Yeah, they mix uh, with also like with Tagalog. A, a lot of this Arab uh, influence that they yes, have. Yes, too. It's amazing. I it's am amazing how everything evolves. <laughs> ah, thank you guys so much for recommending this video. We enjoyed it a lot. And now watch this, this video, video that appears right here is recommended by YouTube's algorithm, especially, especially for you. So click on it right, right now. now.